Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to do something a little different. Uh, today I wanted to demonstrate this really simple app that I created using the WebEx API and then from there talk about the process involved in putting something like this together. Now unless you've been living under a rock you know that Cisco has really been pushing programmability and they've really um, interwoven it into the new certifications that are coming online in February. Now you're going to see two new specialization tracks that overlap with collaboration. One for automating collaboration solutions. That's the uh, 300 835 Clado, and uh, one for developing WebEx applications, the uh, 300 920 uh, Dev WebEx. So even if you're not a programmer or a developer, this is definitely something that you need to be paying attention to. So let's take a look here. I'm just going to paste in my token, and I'll talk more about uh, the token in just a second. Uh, and then I'll click log in here. Now this token connects me to my WebEx Teams account and then when I click get rooms uh, it'll go out and grab all the rooms or actually spaces that I'm currently in and then it'll list them here. Now just to see this working let's go back to my uh, WebEx client and create a new space. We'll say uh, collab crush WebEx video there. Now let's go back to our web app, uh, click get rooms again, and there we can see the space that we just created. Now I know you're probably thinking, well that's that's nice, uh, but that's not very useful, but keep in mind uh, that the functionality here is limited on purpose. Uh, it's just sort of a test to see if we can access the API, uh, see, you know, does our code work, uh, can we print the results on the screen, and of course uh, it helps us to think about the user interface, the user experience and so forth, kind of a, a proof of concept. So what I want to do is sort of take a step back and talk about what was involved to get us uh, up to this point. The Cisco has a really excellent site to help you plan out what you want your app to do uh, because it allows you to explore the API right from the web page. No need for Postman or whatever. Uh, just go to developer.webex.com. Uh, if you don't have an account already, uh, you can create one for free. And then uh, once you're logged in, you can start testing different endpoints, uh, see what kind of data you can get back, and uh, really get a sense of what's possible. And the data is returned as JSON, which makes it really easy to deal with. The developer site is also where you go to get your access token. I mentioned this earlier. This works kind of like a username and password all in one, but it only lasts for 12 hours at a time, and that's because it's really only supposed to be used for development purposes. For a production environment, you'd want to use OAuth, but uh, we're going to stick to using an access token for now just to keep things simple. Once I knew what I wanted my app to do, I used Figma to design the interface. Uh, even for something simple like this, I went through uh, several versions until I finally settled on one that I thought would work. Prototyping is a really important step. Even just sketching out your idea on paper is uh, important because the last thing you want to do is spend a lot of time and effort and energy building your interface only to realize that for whatever reason it's not going to work. And the last part of the process was the coding. The interface is put together with HTML and CSS. So after laying down the bones with HTML, I started uh, with the back layer of the interface. Uh, I worked from top to bottom, then moved uh, to the sliding front, again, top to bottom. Then the sliding front also required a simple JavaScript function. So when you click on the login button, it changes the CSS class and then runs the animation. For making the API calls, I'm using vanilla JavaScript. Now there is an SDK for Node.js, and uh, I'm sure I'll be using that in future videos, but, but for this project, I didn't want to have to use any dependencies or modules or whatever. 
The access token entered in the text field is stored in a variable. Now, when you click the button to log in, it runs the animation, and then when the user clicks Get Rooms, it uses that token to authenticate the Get request. To make the Get request, I use the Fetch API. The room or uh, space information is returned as an array, and then I loop through each result and display it on the back layer uh, through an empty div tag. And this could easily be expanded to do much more than just list rooms. In fact, I'm currently working on putting together a whole new DevNet series on how to build something like this, only a, a bit more useful, a bit more practical. So these videos are gonna be geared toward people who have little or even no experience programming. We're gonna start from scratch and go through every step, a, a zero to hero kind of progression. So if you're interested in seeing videos like this in the future, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. For now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll catch you on the next one.